In this video, I'm looking at the Meze Audio Advar. Let's get it. What's cracking, audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. This is the box for the Advar, and it is a lovely box, but we're not here to talk about that, are we? I'll show you what you get inside. You get the case, that's the standard Meze case that comes with the Rai Penta and the Rai Solo. And of course, you get these babies right here. We'll have a closer look at them in a minute. First of all, I just want to have a look at this uh, cable real quick. It's basically the same one you get with the Rye Solo, which is a little bit disappointing. I mean, the quality of the cable is good, but it doesn't handle so well. You, as you can see, the preformed ear hooks there are quite aggressive, and combined with the thinness above the Y split, just makes it very prone to tangling. So I do wish they would um, give you a slightly nicer cable, although of course, Standard MMCX connectors means that you can easily swap the cable out yourself if you want to. But just feast your eyes on those for a moment. I mean, whew, boy oh boy. If you're not familiar with Meze Audio, then you should be. These are made in Romania. I mean, just look at those curves and those colors. You get this gorgeous brass colored nozzles going on, matching mm matching rim on the mmcx sockets there look at that fine print i don't know if you can see it on the camera probably not but just look at that they are absolutely beautiful they have a little bit of heft to them so they feel nice and robust in the hand they feel very premium they look gorgeous in fact they are so pretty we'll come in a little bit closer today just so you can bask in their glory so the Meze Audio Advar, the price is $699. Now inside of these, we've got a 10.2 millimeter dynamic driver. Don't know much else about the specifics of the driver, except for the size. Uh, the frequency range is 10 hertz to 30 hertz, so you've got a very good spread across the range there. An impedance of 31 ohms, which is nominal, and uh, SPL or sensitivity of 111 decibels. So that's pretty good. It's easy to, very easy to drive. You don't need a powerful source. You can run it off a DAP, probably even a phone, although they do scale well with the source. So you want to give it something with, um, you know, a bit more quality, at least a dongle DAC. Now, in terms of the sound, the Advar has a fairly balanced presentation. It's got a robust and upfront sound. It's a style that's refreshing in the current landscape that's been dominated by sort of anemic mid bass and hollow lower mids recently. On the contrary, Advar goes out of its way to draw you into the music with its emotive and engaging delivery. The end result is an alluring, warm, yet energetic and spacious sound that perfectly embodies the idea of musical expression. It also serves to remind us that a well-tuned single dynamic driver is still hard to beat, especially when it comes to air movement, and I mean specifically the bass and the cohesiveness. Graph. Advar's bass is, in a word, exceptional. It represents the best aspects of a dynamic driver, such as impact, naturalness, and texture. The transition from the sub bass to the mid bass is fairly linear with just a slight roll off in the sub bass. As a result, it gives us an authoritative impact throughout and not just heavy undertones. It can rumble with the best of them, but it's more multifaceted and complex than a mere sub bass cannon. The bass is rich in tone and tuned for fun. This is where Advar gets its sense of rhythm and high level of engagement. Nonetheless, it performs highly in a technical sense with good speed, layering. In short, Advar's bass is not only a joy to hear, but it is a cornerstone of its overall performance. The mid-range is lush and velvety, yet it has a fairly neutral tone and note size. It inherits its warmth from the mid bass, but at the same time, it sounds remarkably open and spacious. Rich in dynamics and detail, mid-range instruments are full-bodied, but never thick. 
One of the most impressive aspects of Advar's mids is its accurate timbre. Neither overly romanticized nor clinically dry, everything sounds just as it should. Guitar sounds have a natural mixture of strings and body. Cellos resonate with fullness, yet they're surrounded by large amounts of clean air. Vocals are articulate and clear, but never bright or shouty. They're rich and saturated, but in a beautiful, clean manner. The mid-range just sounds so effortless and natural, and that's a big part of its appeal. It's lush without being thick, and it has excellent resolution without sacrificing body or warmth. Then Advar's treble has good extension and ample precision. It's airy and spacious, and it's responsible for the solid level of detail retrieval, which is really good. In addition, it's the treble tuning that brings clarity to the mid-range and definition across the spectrum, uh, specifically when it comes to transient attacks. It's a resolving treble, and despite being quite energetic, it never quite crosses the threshold into sharpness. Without the upper treble lift, the bass would dominate the scene, and the mid-range would lose its clarity. Advar manages to find the perfect balance between forwardness and comfort in terms of the treble. Now, as far as the soundstage and technicalities go, this is the part that surprised me most about the Advar. I was relieved right away to discover it's the warm tonality on my first listen. Uh, what I wasn't expecting though was the openness of the soundstage and the high level of detail that came along with those engaging and meaty lows. Advar's soundstage is moderate in size and it's neither particularly wide or deep, but where it shines, it's in its ability to separate instruments and vocals on the stage and maintain a black background between them. As a result of its transparency and resolution, Advar's imaging is excellent. The placement of instruments is easy to determine and track within the music. Let's do a couple of quick comparisons now. We'll start off with the Ear Sonics Onyx. The Onyx here is a quad driver IEM, one, di uh, one dynamic driver and three balanced armatures. It's got this really sort of rugged build quality. Uh, it's assembled by hand in France. It feels a lot more utilitarian. It's kind of, it's much larger and heavier, obviously, than the Advar. Uh, much larger and heavier. But as a result, um, it does offer better passive noise isolation. I find them really comfortable as well. Once you get the right tips, these fit in your ear beautifully. They, they don't stick out too much, but I digress. Now, the Onyx's sound is more V-shaped. It has an extended sub-bass and a slightly recessed lower mid-range. Its sub-bass rumble is more powerful, but it tapers off quickly on this side, on the right side, if you know what, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking graph, graph language here, but it tapers off quickly on the right side to create openness in the mid range. The Advar uh, has more upper bass presence and body in the lower mid range. So male vocals sound a bit thicker. Bass guitars are a bit more prominent and forward, which is nice. However, the Onyx here does favor female vocals, so giving them a bit more separation from the lows and added vibrancy. Onyx's treble is denser and it's focused on the lower treble bands. However, the Advar's treble soars into the ether due to its upper treble lift. The Onyx creates a wider soundstage despite having less upper treble. Uh, Advar's stage position is more forward closer to the listener, creating sort of vocal intimacy and extra depth behind that center image. So good layering going forward, but not quite as wide as the Onyx. And now a look at the Dunu Studio SA6. Now the SA6 here has six balanced armatures per side, and I know it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but there are only a certain amount of five to seven hundred dollar IEMs that I can pull out of the air for a comparison, so you'll have to deal with it. 
<laughs> They've got resin, sh resin shells, sort of pseudo custom style, excellent passive noise isolation. Um, the SA6 has a leaner and a brighter tonality. The most obvious difference is in the bass and the Dunus lows sound and feel like a balanced armature bass, meaning they're very fast, they're very clean, but they lack the authority and the impact of the Advars dynamic drivers. The SA6 midrange is thinner, it's drier, uh, it is spacious and airy, and it prioritizes accuracy over tone. Uh, the Advar in comparison has richer, more engaging mids, but it's less articulate and detailed. The Dunu has drier treble notes, while Advars have a hint of warmth and sparkle. Staging and imaging are more accurate on the SA6, and its stage dimensions are larger. However, things are almost they're like almost too clinical on the SA6, which is ideal, I guess, for a professional monitor. But the Advar, in contrast, is more musical and it has a kind of better dynamics. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Meze Audio Advar. And in case you can't tell, I absolutely love these things. Um, like I mentioned, when I had my very first listen, I was relieved to find that they've got a really inviting tonality, warm, uh, not harsh, not for me. Some people do find the treble a little bit edgy, but not for me. I haven't had any issues whatsoever with it. I just love the overall sound of these, the technicalities as well in combination with that beautiful tonality. So if you are looking for something in that sort of higher tier than the stuff I usually look at, definitely consider these. These are absolutely immaculate. Like if you can get yourself to a can jam or whatever, have a listen or just buy, buy blindly. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say that often, but buy blindly. Unless you're especially um, sensitive to treble, then maybe not. But really for most people shouldn't have any issue with the highs whatsoever this is a glorious in-ear monitor i highly highly recommend it absolutely love it let's wrap it up thanks for watching the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up parfam audio file style if you're new to the channel and you want to see more content like this make sure you hit that subscribe button and until next time i'll see you later